Hi all and welcome to the mailbox and of course we're going to be going over the topics of conversations from over the last week including of course yet again the global cool down things but what I'm going to say is there's going to be a slight difference within this mailbox and before we even get to the first comment I need to say a few things because it could be a bit edgier and there could be some people get a bit upset about this and it's caused me to reconsider a couple of things about the channel and so be warned so the global cooldown debark i did another video on that of course i've done a few videos everything that um particularly game design wise is one of the more interesting things about an expansion for me storyline features sure i enjoy my questing i enjoy my raiding those are the two things i enjoy most in the world of warcraft but when it comes to discussing things game design is right up there for me and of course what i like to do is to try and get at the nitty-gritty things the things that people other people don't discuss so much uh, or the people who are discussing it not on such an open forum so we had another discussion i tried something a little bit different discussing it on the stream so a few other people so their comments could be seen discuss it with a few other people as well see how that went not quite sure but one really important thing, one really interesting thing was that video, although, you know, if you just look at the basic stats of it, you know, it had a lot of comments um, and it had a lot of likes and it had a few dislikes. It's no different to any other discussion video that I did. But with one key difference, it lost me a lot of subscribers. A lot. Uh, and this was quite telling because I know in the past people have sort of said, um, that I seem to be far too pro-Blizzard about certain things. Uh, and that's just, for my mind, an inevitable aspect of the fact that I enjoy this game. I am presenting my genuine views on anything. I'm not pandering to anyone. I don't need to pander to anyone. Uh, it's very, very clear that this channel is not going to be a big channel ever. There's no point in me trying to pander to people. I can just let it be what it is. Uh, you know, if the channel does well, of course, it's, you know, the impetus is there for me to, to do more content. If it declines, then obviously less content. Um, you know, whatever, I'll just adjust to whatever uh, the channel does. But there's no point in me trying to do content that will please people. If I was going to do that, it's actually really easy for me to do that. I'll just, you know, do what some people do and pretend to be an expert on everything. You know, I'll do guides on every single spec in the game by reading what the experts of those specs are writing and just put it into video format, knowing full well that they're not doing the same. And if anyone asks me to analyze logs on any spec in the game, I'll just run it through a WoW analyzer and pretend I've done the same analysis. No problem at all. Hugely dishonest, but not a problem to do. But the GCD thing. So, yeah, so a lot of people said, you know, so then I've thought to myself, well, inevitably, my content is going to be mostly positive. Of course it is. If it was not, then the question could reasonably ask to me, why are you even playing the game? And, you know, I would think to myself, yeah, why am I playing the game if I find so many things disappointing? The fact of the matter is there's a small number of things I'm disappointed in, but that doesn't mean to say I'm not going to talk about them. So then, yeah, so seeing it lose a load of subscribers and then thinking, hmm, am I actually just providing a safe space for the white knights, as I call them, the people who will defend Blizzard against anything? Because most of the time, that's what I do. On the small number of times where I do a video that says, oh, this is bad, they'll just say, oh, you know, I disagree, and leave it at that and wait for my next positive one. But maybe because... There's been there's been four or five design decisions um, that are so bad it's worthy of discussion several times, especially as Blizzard add more and more into the discussion. I mean, a lot of the reason why I'm doing several videos on some of these topics is simply because Blizzard have been portioning out information on it bit by bit instead of just coming out at the start and going through everything. Uh, they've done little by little. So every time something is added, of course, it's worth talking about it again. Now... From that point of view, um, I am going to have to say that I'm going to have to say something that some people might think are quite rude. So specifically on the global cooldown, before I come to a couple of particular comments, um, I'm going to say this. People need the people who are saying that what Ian Hazacosta says makes sense. First of all, I went through everything he said in that video and 
tore it down. Now, if you disagree with that, why is it that nobody who's disagreeing with it is able to point either any flaws in my arguments or saying what it is that in Hazakostas makes sense? I've even directly asked people, you think it makes sense? What did he say that makes sense? And people, no one has been able to tell me. No one. Why not? Why can't you tell me if he said something that makes sense? Because he didn't. And then the other thing that people have tried to do is to say, oh, it's quite clear that the reason they're doing it for it is this, they're doing this thing. Well, if that's the reason, why couldn't Ian Hazacostas himself say it? But the other thing is it's also not true, but I'll come to those in a minute. The question people really seriously need to ask themselves is this. Now, now let's bear this in mind. I know on my channel I have a small number of top raiders, like, you know, in the top five guilds watching it, but a small number. The vast, and, and then I've got some like top 100 and you go all the way down and then you've got a lot, of course, of, of very, very casual players. And so by definition, a lot of the people watching this now, uh, a lot of you, if not all, don't actually understand the game mechanics in great detail. You know, not at the level of, say, a top theory crafter. Uh, I mean, I don't myself. I try and learn what I can. But bear in mind, I get a lot of my information from those top theory crafters from discussing things with them. Because I talk to people about the game, the people who are, who have to know the game so well, because they've got to come up with models for the game. SimCraft has no hope of being accurate unless it closely models the way the characters work. It can't obviously model each individual fight, which is why we always caution against certain things um, in terms of applying it to a given fight in a raid or a dungeon or whatever but it can accurately model the classes and the specs and how they work. In order to do that, they have to know how things work. And, and those are the guys who, by the way, that Blizzard uh, respect as well. You've got to bear in mind, there are, some, there are a small number of players who understand the game so well that Blizzard are in direct contact with them to point out things that shouldn't be. So things that aren't part of their grand design that don't work. For example, they've discovered something on Reptardium that's two talents that are interacting with each other in a way that they're not supposed to. You know, and that's the sort of thing uh, that, that means that Blizzard actually listen to these guys because they, they find these things out. What you have to ask yourself is this. So all of these guys are basically saying the GCD, uh, you know, philosophy, we'll call it that, is bad. And not only that, they're also saying that Blizzard's explanation for why they're doing it is nonsense, makes no sense at any level. Ask yourself this, as someone who does not understand the game as well as these guys, why are you saying it makes sense? Because that's just dumb. I'm sorry, that is just dumb. Whenever I think I understand a thing, if someone who's clearly more expert than me on it says something op the opposite of that, I reevaluate my understanding of it. That's what I do. I did the same last night, in fact. I was talking about a particular thing. Someone else said something that, that seemed to contradict it, and I thought to myself, oh, actually, that's weird. I need to think about this a little bit more. And, and that's the way you should be with it. The other thing is this, you know, some people have, have talked about me, oh, you know, you just argue it because it's affecting you, the small, you know, it's affecting your little niche of players. The global cooldown philosophy personally benefits me. I could easily argue in favour of it because for me personally, because I also like saying I'm blinkered, by the way, is a nonsense because I have a high level of, of critical analysis. I and mean, that's not just arrogance. I've, I've done a degree physics, astrophysics from the University of Manchester, for goodness sake. You know, I have a lot of training in being critical of anything I see. But what certainly puts me at risk, I play one spec, I play Retribution Paladin. In terms of serious raiding, that's all I play. I, you know, I will reluctantly, if a fight demands it, go on a crappy out, but I don't really gear them up or anything like that. Um, but I want to play Retribution Paladin. Now, granted, that puts me at high risk of being a little bit blinkered when it comes to something that is particularly harsh against my spec. Sure. But this benefits Rep Paladins. And the reason it benefits Rep Paladins is because all our stuff was on the global cooldown anyway. The only thing that's been added to the global cooldown for Battle for Azeroth is one, Shield of Vengeance, which is an ability that Rep Paladins don't like anyway. And that'll be a simple you know, decision. Either it'll be worth a global cooldown to use or it won't. And we'll just, it's binary. We'll either use it or we won't. 
and, and if we don't use it because of the global cool down, no one's, no, and you'll notice no one is kicking up a fuss about it. I'm not going to kick up a fuss. No one's going to kick up a fuss because we don't like the ability anyway. Secondly, Avenging Wrath, well, it's not as big a deal for us because it already lasts between 20 and 25 seconds as it is. Um, you know, an extra global cooldown on a spec that also traditionally wants highish haste anyway. So our haste is going to, we're going to have as low a global cooldown as most specs anyway. Uh, it really doesn't affect us that badly. But there are some classes and specs who currently have things off the global cooldown. Uh, you know, utility abilities that are going to now have them on. Not all of them because they're leaving some off, but some of them are going to have them on. So, you know, it's like I always say, a buff can still be a nerf if everyone else is buffed more. But also, a nerf can still be a buff if everyone else is nerfed more. And it's that second one that's true for Red Paladins. So for me personally, I gain. This is a net benefit to me. So my arguing against it is just purely on moral grounds. It is bad for the game. And more, what I'm mostly arguing about is actually not the, the virtues of global cooldowns being put on more things as opposed to fewer things anyway. It comes down to this. Blizzard's explanation does not make sense. I have, and I have gone through every single one in detail and explained why it doesn't make sense. So if someone is going to say that it does make sense, what you need to do is to say what they said and explain how it makes sense. Saying something like uh, heroic leap, oh yeah, but that's because you've got to click a button as well. Okay, fine. If they only applied it to those sort of abilities, I can buy why that should be off the global cooldown. I mean, I think it should be off anyway. But then when they say, but charge is going to be on the global cooldown, and more important, more important, that the druid ability, which I keep wild charge, is going to be on the global cooldown. But Shadow Step is going to be off. And the reason given was not a gameplay decision. The reason given was purely because it'll help it make it feel special. You know. But anyway, let's get on to the actual comments. So yeah, what I'm basically saying in terms of the channel is, you know, if I, I need to make it really, really clear. I am not here to provide an echo chamber. I don't want people here thinking, oh, I agree with most of what he says, so I'll stay here. In fact, you shouldn't. You should actually seek out people who have differing views to you. Most of what I say about World of Warcraft is going to be positive because I love World of Warcraft. It's my main game. I have been recently desperately trying to play more Elder Scrolls Online because I love that game too, but not as much. So every time... Every time I have a thing, oh, I should do this in WoW or I want to do this in Elder Scrolls Online, WoW wins every time because I prefer it. Um, so obviously what I'm going to say is overwhelmingly positive. But when I've got something critical to say, I am going to say it. I am going to justify it. If anyone wants to argue with me, that's fantastic. But you need to argue with it. You need to not just say, oh, it makes sense. Oh, you're just being blinkered or something like that. That doesn't prove anything. Well, it only proves one thing. It proves that you are not a critical thinker. That's all it proves. So, on to the first couple. At last. At last. Where is it? I've lost it. There it is. So, it says, uh, the game will change to fit the GCD change, uh, hopefully, if everything is telegraphed or in some ways other noticeable beforehand without the use of add-ons. So, what this person is saying, which a few people have said, I've chosen this comment because it said a few things, that other people have been saying is, oh, well, you know, what they're going to do is change boss mechanics so everything is telegraphed more so you have more time so the global cooldown doesn't have an effect. No, that's not what they're doing. And um, there's two ways we know that's not what they're doing. One, they haven't said that. If they said that, that would actually help to back up their point of view. Ian Hazacosta's talked for like over 10 minutes and he didn't say that. So people coming up with explanations for it that he didn't, why would he need to bullshit his way through that 10 plus minutes explanation if he had some valid things to say? The second thing is, although proper boss raid testing hasn't taken place yet, we have had one. Admittedly, it was mostly for the purpose of just checking that these raid tests would be okay. But it's interesting to note that the boss that has so far been tested ironically has an ability that you have to react to super quick and there's nothing telegraphing it. Nothing at all. So the very opposite is happening. So, no, uh, this is not the case. But also, there's no suggestion that this is the case. This is just people trying to reconcile two things. One, Blizzard are putting this change in. Two, I have the view that Blizzard know what they're doing and are doing things for the benefit of me. And they're trying to reconcile that. 
but there isn't anything linking those two things, so they're coming up with their own link. It says, hopefully this means that no mechanics will be unforeseeable. No. Uh, but that's a hard thing to do. It is. The whole point of Mythic Raiding, Blizzard said this when they brought it in, the whole point of Mythic Raiding is that you do not constrain the encounter designers. That they, if they come up with cool new abilities, then they're going to put them in. And they mustn't go, oh, we can't really do it because of this or because of that. It says, in my world, anyone should be able to get out of something with 100% movement speed without already being in movement when it randomly appears under you, for instance, of course. And nothing should appear and deal damage until minimum two seconds. Oh, no. See, two seconds. See, this is again where, you know, in terms of skill, two seconds is a long time. You shouldn't need two seconds to get out of something. One second would be nice. One second is nice. You don't need two seconds. Uh, all hard things to get done with this wouldn't make the, the changes make sense. Um, as I say, it, it, it still wouldn't make the changes make sense. It still wouldn't do that. But they're not going to do that. That's not the reason they're doing it. It says, with regards to offensive cooldowns, if people complain about duration, amounts and strength of cooldowns, then we could get them down to a level there where, where they won't be the only way to land a kill in PvP. Again, this link to PvP. There need be... We used to have the days when things were nerfed in PvE because of PvP perceived unbalance. Um, we're supposed to have moved on from that. But in actual fact, I will come to the point is, and what I said in that video as well, there must, or at least I said it in the discussion, remember that video was not the whole discussion, there must be a reason why Blizzard are doing it. They're not just doing it to piss us off. That's the one thing he did say that didn't make sense. They're not doing it to piss us off. They have a reason, but they're not saying what the reason is. There are a couple of possibilities. Someone did touch on it in another comment. It might be that, you know, the real reason is for PvP. And they don't want to have it on the global cooldown for PvP and off it for PvE. But I would argue on that particular case, why not? Because uh, people might imagine, well, it's too jarring for people moving between the two. But actually, how many people is that affecting? How many people, I don't mean how many people PvP and PvE. It doesn't really matter if you don't do it at a high level. How many people do PvE at a very high level and PV, you know, both of them. Raiding, let's say, uh, you know, the people who sort of do the very, very fast progress raiding, uh, push very high Mythic Plus dungeons and do very high level PvP. There's a small number of people who do that. A very small number of people. And that small number of people are sufficiently skilled to be able to adapt between PvP and PvE uh, playstyles. It's not that difficult a thing. I mean, it's a bit like when I was younger, I used to do Judo and Jiu Jitsu. In Jiu Jitsu, you can punch people. In Judo, you can't. I didn't ever get confused in a Judo fight and lamp someone. You know, because you can adapt to the different environments. You can go, oh, okay, I'm now in this environment, now in that. Same with, I teach. I, I, one of my big fears when I started teaching, I remember my first day as a trainee teacher, shitting myself that I was going to swear. <laughs> you know, because, especially at university, that's my, 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 it's my sweariest portion of my life. Because everyone else was swearing. People used to punctuate with the F word. It's madness. So I, you know, you, you adapt, don't you? Um, so I was, you know, crapping myself. But I didn't. Because do you know what? It was a different environment and, and I became a different person. I speak differently to my classes than I do e even here now. And I speak differently here to I do when I'm just like, you know, with friends and stuff like that. You know, you, you change. It's not a difficult thing to get used to. So, you know, that is possible. It's a possible reason, but I don't think it's a valid reason. Uh, but there will be a reason. They're just not saying what it is. Uh, anyway, sorry, let's carry on with the rest of it. If everyone has one offensive ability on the GCD along with one more possible through talents, then I think we'll be fine as the initial GCD will feel like the standard of activation. If it lasts long enough, yeah, like my cooldown lasts a good 20 seconds. Uh, an extra GCD lost there is, isn't is as big a deal, as I say, especially for someone who's going to be wanting a fair bit of haste anyway uh, to help smooth the old rotation out. But for some who have those really short cooldowns, like six seconds. Global cooldown in that's massive. Massive. Uh, it says, you may or may not like that, but let's not discuss that part of it. Discuss what part of it? I don't get that, sorry. Didn't get the last bit. But anyway, there we go. So, you know, that's just coming up with, you know, something to fill that link between Blizzard must be doing this for our benefit and, you know, what it is. But, you know, no. 
Uh, it says next one, I tried to see the global picture. Well, this is a good thing, of course. I'm trying to see how various things link. It says there are various actions that are, take, that are taken that feel to me as part of the same plan. Nerf on tank tools, need on how many actions you can do at the same time, need on stuns, but giving everyone more base items. We will feel in more danger. The long-term plan to me is forcing players to again use more planned CC and dungeon. No, it's not. This is not going to do that. This, again, is someone who wants a particular... Right, and I know there's a lot of people who hanker back for the old vanilla dungeon days where you come to a trash bag and you go, OK, we're going to need to CC that, and you'll tank that, and you'll tank that. And, you know, and that sort of slowed down deliberations that take place. Much like happens now, you only get that now with raid trash, uh, if at all, if you ever get it at all. Um, but no, we're never going to go with that. Does. The reason we don't have that now is not because of the way the classes work. The reason why you do not have that in Mythic Plus Dungeons, even higher level ones, is because they're on a timer. They are on a timer. You cannot afford to play it over safe in the way that you did. The reason why we used to all do that in Vanilla Dungeons, by the way, was not because Vanilla Dungeons demanded that playstyle. It was not because the way our classes were, with much fewer utility options, demanded that playstyle. It was because we were in pugs with no effective means of communication other than typing, you know, and a mage might do that silly marking thing as if to say, I'll sheep that one. Uh, that was essentially the communication that took place there. And you wanted it to be safe. We didn't want to wipe because we were in a pug as it was. We'd already spent 40 minutes getting the group together. We knew we were going to be in that dungeon for another hour to two hours. We didn't need to be delaying it any longer. So we played it safe because in the long run that was better. But those days are gone because... We're on a timer, so we need to get in, we need to deal with it. Um, none of this affects that at all. Now, in terms of other things people said, someone said about, because another thing Blizzard are doing is wanting to slow us down a bit. Uh, they're wanting to increase downtime in all the rotations. Some people see this as part of that. But actually, and this is what I meant before about not quite understanding how mechanics work, it works against it. Because if you are increasing the amount of downtime in uh, a rotation then you the the global cooldown sort of works against it because it's filling it back up again <laughs> you know what i mean you know that that extra global cooldown is filling it it's making it harder for them to maintain that downtime that they want because it means you take longer over it. if you take longer over it that means you're more active more often so those are two key design issues that are working against each other which again only highlights the nonsense of it all because they, you're trying to see a global picture, I try and see global pictures, but Blizzard are not. And the reason they're not is because, and we know this from Legion, they have these individual teams working on things, and there is a almost complete lack of coordination between them. We knew this from Tumas Sargeras, the issue that even within one team, the encounter design team, that they weren't communicating about mechanics that were doing on different bosses, which is why we ended up with soak mechanics on all but one of the mythic bosses. And, and Ian Hazakos has even said this. It's because they weren't talking to each other. So you don't... I mean, that's within a team. Almost no communication between different teams. You know, in fact, he said one of the big changes for BFA is going to be that there's going to be some link between the encounter design team and the class design team, as if that shouldn't have been obvious 15 years ago. Has it taken this long? So that only to, and they can't overnight go from having no real discussion between teams to all of a sudden having the whole thing properly coordinated. We we know it wasn't coordinated before. Ian Hazakos himself has said so. You know, even if he knew exactly how to get uh, this all done, which may not be true, because remember his background is not from business management or anything. You know, he's learned on the job. He doesn't necessarily know how to get this large team to all be coordinated. You know, that's why these things are happening, because, you know, one group does this thing, and it sort of makes sense, oh yeah, we'll go for it. This group does this thing, oh yeah, that makes sense, Ian Hazakos is quite happy with each individually. But then they work against each other, but and people don't realise, because no one's thinking about what the other team's doing. Uh, you know, and the people who do realise are, ironically, as I say, those expert players, who have to understand everything Blizzard's doing in order for them to be able to come up with accurate models of how it's going to work. The top raiders need to know how it is so that they can eke out whatever benefits they can from any new system uh, and make sure that they're not caught with their pants down when it comes to the raid race. 
you know, there, there are some players, a small number of players in this game, who must understand how everything works. They're the ones with the global picture, and they're the ones we should be listening to. Okay, so let's get on to some uh, more usual sort of comments. Uh, as a right knowledge, uh, so this is the idea, just like with artifact knowledge, that, you know, catch-up mechanic, basically. So for people who are a bit behind, it means, you know, actually, they, they said it's going to work a little bit differently, I think. I seem to recall it. So instead of it causing us to have... Oh, no, that's right. They didn't say anything about it, but WoW had a, a data mine some data, which seems to suggest that instead of it causing us to get more Azerite from the Azerite we find, it will mean we'll need less Azerite to go up the ranks. But it amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? But this idea of a catch-up mechanic. So it's a dumb idea because it means people don't want to play early. Why spend a month grinding now or one minute later? It's a very anti-play implementation. And I suppose that's focused on a, a very specific portion of the player base. Those who wouldn't actually mind when the expansion comes out, just leaving it a month and then starting it a month later when maybe there'll be a few more perks to help the catch-up. And, and that's, you know, for that group of players, potentially quite valid. In fact, quite... And, and this is the difficulty I think Blizzard do have as well. It's quite tricky. Obviously, the catch-up mechanics are there to help those who don't play the game as much or come into the game later. But at the same time, the whole point of Azerite and the whole point of Artifact Power, all of these devices, they're not there for gameplay reasons. Um, for those of us who play it, like, regularly anyway. It's there for the people who would otherwise maybe subscribe one month out of every four or five, something like that. They subscribe for a month, consume the casual content, leave it till the next major patch and then subscribe for another month. They obviously want them to stay subscribed for longer, preferably every all 12 months of the year. Um, but yeah, it's quite tricky because you could also argue for those plays. They would still look at it as, well, that's okay because I can still do that and you put this catch-up mechanic in for me. It's not an easy thing for Blizzard to solve. I don't think there is an easy way to deal with it. Other than, of course, just abandoning the whole concept of trying to retain these subscribers with uh, with devices that just make it awkward for other players, the ones who would stay subscribed anyway. But, um, I mean, I don't even know what the answer to it is on that one. But, yeah, so I, I can understand from very casual players that it does mean that you are less likely to, to keep doing it, especially early on, because you could easily see it as well. You're just going to get those gains later on anyway. <laughs> I think usually they try and pitch it still, though, that the people who play regularly will still always be ahead of the others. Because when it says catch-up, I don't think it actually is catch-up as such. I think it just helps you stay, you know, in their dust trail. But anyway... Um, but it is a quite a difficult thing, yeah. They, they have got to try and encourage people to say subscribe for longer. And, and, you know, I have ways that I would do instead that I think would be more effective, but that's just my opinion. Um, impossible to, to tell unless you actually try them out. Blizzard just... Blizzard just see the game as... It's so it's such a loot-orientated game, World of Warcraft, even by the standards of a lot of other MMOs. Uh, it's hugely loot-orientated. They... They seem to see almost no other way to encourage us to play. Uh, next one. So to do with LFR, and I, so I did a video, of course, on, you know, can we encourage more people to uh, not just stay in LFR? It says, if LFR was deleted next Tuesday, how many subs would lapse? The LFR casual crowd is the cash cow of WoW. Not only will LFR not go away, how long do you think it would be before there's an add-on that does LFR-like functionality via the community. So a few things in here. Um, first of all, the LFR casual crowd is the cash cow of WoW. I'm, I don't know. A lot of people think because the number of, of casual players and the players who will play exclusively in LFR is greater than those who would do higher levels of it means that they contribute more to the Blizzard coffers. This is not necessarily true because you're, you're basing it on the assumption that everyone contributes the same amount of money. But that's not true. For example, a lot of the casual crowd don't subscribe for 12 months in the year. So, and, and some of them don't really subscribe at all. Um, you know, they, there'll be some players who maybe farm gold and therefore get a WoW token. Now, that means that, you know, someone like myself is actually contributing more. If you think about it, I pay for three subscriptions. I have three accounts, which I pay for. In addition to that, I usually get a couple of WoW tokens every now and then. Um, 
So that's adding on to it as well. If I have to change guilds, then it's very rare in any given year that I don't. Then that means a server transfer. I've never, since vanilla, vanilla was the last time I could ever do this, I have never been able to change guilds on the same server. That has never happened. So when I change guilds, I have to move server. Sometimes faction. So there's an extra load of money as well. The amount of money they get from me is worth a room full of casual players. An absolute room full. Now, okay, I may be contributing significantly more than some others. Um, there may be others that, that is a bit less. But it's not necessarily true to say that. That being said, it is, of course, a very significant um, a contribution. And this is one of the reasons why I argue for the you know, retention of LFR. I do not argue for the removal of LFR at all. I say that every time I talk about LFR. I am a supporter of it. I just don't think it should be as it is now. But I still think it should service the people as it does now. Uh, it says, not only will LFR not go away, how long do you think it will be before there's an add-on that does LFR-like functionality via the communities? Um, I'd be very surprised if there was anything at all. I know it, I know this. people are getting very excited about this communities thing is a way to encourage more people into like social spaces along similar, um, you know, like interests in the game. And, and that might lead them to getting more coordinated and move them, stuff like that. But what is this communities thing really? It's really just Blizzard trying to stop people using Discord as much. <laughs> really, that's all it's about. Uh, they're just trying to have their own version of Discord and hope that people will use that more. Um, but but the other thing, yeah, the other thing is, so the people who would only play LFR are much less likely to get involved in those communities. The reason, or one of the reasons, why people get involved in that is because they feel that they either don't have the time or they, for other reasons, don't have the inclination to get involved in the social aspects of the game, guilds and things like that. Otherwise, you know, you could easily join a guild as a social, um, you know, still do your LFR, and every now and then, if you happen to be online when that guild does some outruns in normal or heroic, or even just does normal in heroic, as long as you're, you know, going to be able to contribute, you could get in anyway. I mean, when, when I've been in guilds that have done split runs, we don't just take out raiders. We take socials as well to fill up the numbers. You're not getting any loot unless you happen to coin it. You get your uh, achievement, though. You'll get, as, assuming we can go through the whole thing, uh, split raid, then you'll get your achievements. You'll get your ahead of the curve, which will help you get into pugs and stuff like that, if you so wish. Um, and as I say, you get to use a few coins, so you never know. You might wangle something there. Um but generally speaking, yeah, the people that exclusively exist in LFR tend not to want to do that for whatever reason. They've got various different reasons, probably as many reasons as there are people. So I think it's unlikely. But I'm not going to rule it out completely because I am still curious to see exactly how the player base will take to these community ideas. Uh, so next one, it says... Um, Again, this is to do with the LFR. Uh, this was a very good comment, actually. After reading comments from people in different WoW-related forums, one thing stands up for me, performance anxiety. They are afraid of underperforming and the potential consequences behind it. So they're raiding LFR, where they can group up with other underperforming players. Kicking someone out is much harder, etc. It's certainly much more, less likely. Uh, these players are just not going to step into normal or higher because of their own personal fears. And I can't see how Blizzard can help with that unless they have more in-game help so people can learn mechanics, they can feel more confident in stepping into raids. Uh, I hadn't even considered that. Do you know how embarrassing it is? I should have considered that, because I have exactly the same thing in Elder Scrolls Online. When Elder Scrolls Online first came out, I got involved in, I did some dungeons, I grouped up with players, I did all the usual things that you're supposed to do in an MMO. Uh, joined a guild, all the rest of it. The reason I did that is because it was new for everyone. Then when I returned, the game has moved on. All the players that are playing know what's going on. I am the complete noob in the game. And I have not tried to join a guild. I have not tried to get in, into any dungeon runs or like that. I, I, if I keep playing it regularly, which I have been trying to do recently, I eventually will because, of course, it will make sense to do that. And the reason for that is, is the same thing. First of all, I don't understand the language. I don't actually know how to find a group for the dungeon that would be appropriate for my level. You know, I might accidentally try talking to people or getting into a miscommunication with people who are looking for very highly geared and skilled when I'm not. 
you know, the equivalent of a mythic plus 15 when all I need is a heroic dungeon uh, or even a normal dungeon. Um, so there's that. as and But then even getting into the dungeons, you know, when people maybe go and blasting through, know exactly where to go. And I'm just thinking, I don't know what's going on. I could easily get myself killed. Uh, don't necessarily even know how to play the class well yet until I've practiced more. Um, so, yeah, so I have the same thing in, in other games. So I should have yeah, thought about this. But I, I suppose that is true as well. Um, and it is a difficult thing to do something about. Um, but I don't think it applies to everyone. But, yeah, the performance anxiety. Because it wouldn't necessarily be unfounded as well. Because people can be quite harsh in pubs. Because where would people naturally go from an LFR? See, I think, see, especially coming back from early WoW when this is the way you would do it, is you would join a guild. And then the guild... In a guild, everyone is, you know, it's in their interest to help new players along, inexperienced players. You know, help them explain how the game works, how things work, uh, how attitudes work. You know, the, you know, just the, the, the ethos of a raiding environment. But in a pug, it's not in your interest to do that. Uh, if you are deficient in a pug, you are just seen as the weakest link and you are just removed. Goodbye. Sayonara. Go and bother someone else. Um, and because people are more likely, if they go from LFR, to go into a pug as opposed to a guild, maybe they see pug first, then guild, um, which unfortunately is actually the wrong way around. Because pug, carnivorous atmosphere, guild, much more likely to be helpful. More likely, I say. Not guaranteed. Uh, next one. Where are we? Uh, ah, no. So... Another one I have to disagree with, I'm afraid. Uh, LFR should only drop gear as cosmetics, i.e. no stats, if the design is to let bad or lazy players see the story. That's a bit harsh. Um, let them see it, but then being able to see it should be the reward. Here's the thing, though. Although I argue that LFR is for players who either don't have the inclination or the ability... You know, because bear in mind, I mean, if you're like uh, someone who, uh, you know, has to deal with childcare issues, you've got your kid there, you know, in a, in a raid, you know, if, you, if your kid needs attending to and you need to go and see them or something like that, I understand that young family and all the rest of it, that an organised raiding environment would be challenging. Not impossible, though. Again, I think this might be an anxiety thing. I think, you know, in a flex type raid environment, normal or heroic, if you suddenly have to disappear, and it's not happening all the time, it's maybe, you know, Every, probably once a, uh, a raid, maybe you'd have to do this. It's not that big a deal. Even if it happens mid-fight, as long as you're not the tank <laughs> or something like that, or someone with a crucial job. I, I think you know, there'd be plenty, I think you'd be able to get yourself into kills where they'd be understanding about that. But, yeah, so although LFR is designed for players who, who can't do any of the others for whatever reason, you can't, LFR can't support itself, or I don't think it can support itself with only those players. LFR needs more organized raiders, people who know how to do the fights, who know how to play their class a bit better. Every time I go into LFR, and whatever it is, whether it's one of my scrub outs that I don't know what I'm doing with, uh, where I'm playing like a casual myself, or on my main, or, or, a, or just a character I do know how to play at least, okay, it's fairly obvious there's a small number of people carrying it for everyone else you know um i mean i've been in lfr before on my paladin and known that we would have wiped if i were not on on my paladin if i were in on another character we definitely would have wiped because i've taken care of things that other people were not taking care of so i know that um so you are being carried by a small number of people and you need those people to be encouraged to go in so although i can take the point that if it's just people wanting to do it to enjoy the story uh, they can get their gear from their solo activities and just get cosmetic gear from LFR. That would work out in theory if it was self-supporting with people who don't want to access normal or heroic. But the fact that I think for LFR to be successful, I mean, you need, I think you need Raiders for two reasons. One is you need those people to just basically pull everyone else through. Secondly, just numbers. I mean, the queue times can already be quite high, for, especially for DPS. Um if they're too high, again, those people who will say that they don't have enough time. Well, do they have enough time to queue up for 50 minutes and then goodness knows how long during the raid itself? Well, at that point, if you're spending that much time, you've got enough time to, to do it in a guild group. So 
you know, LFR then becomes self-defeating. So I think that's the answer to that one, really. Although you don't need it to encourage people who would who just want to see the story concluded, uh, you need it to encourage other people to do it. Who would not otherwise do it? Because they're going to do the higher levels. And then uh, someone again on the same issue. I'm confused why we need to motivate people to do something. Raiding already grants better rewards than any other game mode. What more do you want? Uh, let people play the game how they want. Well, this is indeed what we're trying to do. But when it comes to playing the game how you want, people play it according to where the greater rewards are. We can look no further than Warlords of Draenor for this. Think about Warlords of Draenor and why it was such a bad expansion. And people would point to that, oh, there's no content, blah, 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 blah. There was content, and there was content added through the expansion. It just wasn't rewarding content. But, you know, look at Tanan Jungle. Tanan Jungle panned. Broken Shore, not panned. Why? They're the same thing. It's just a zone with a load of world quests in it. What was the difference? Broken Shore was more rewarding. You know? Um... I just look at it as simple things like that. You know, one, a lot of the criticisms of Wall of Adrenal was just because it was not rewarding. So what they did in, in Legion was make all this same content that might have just been seen as drudgery in WAD rewarding. Of course, they put in other things as well, like Mythic Plus Dungeons, which was a big boon. Uh, but you know, ultimately, it was really just because they they made it more rewarding. So right from the start, people were more excited about Legion. You know, when at the start, you couldn't necessarily have said a lot of bad things about WAD, but people were. People were not happy with the world quests in what right at the start. So before the lack of new content patch by patch was even an issue, people were already criticizing WAD. And and the reason for that again was these world quests were not bloody Apexis crystals, like limited of things you could do with them, uh, and so they were not seen as rewarding. Uh, so, oh, sorry, I haven't finished. Uh, it says, um, if they don't want to raid, don't force them to. We're not forcing them as well. In fact, you can't, by definition, force a casual player to do anything. Because, you know, they don't need to. There's no enforced aspect to anything if you're playing casually. Like Elder Scrolls Online, I don't do any content that I don't actually want to do. Because why would I? I'm just playing it for fun. Uh, so I'm not accusing you personally, but a lot of raids have a sense of entitlement in WoW. And it's really annoying from a perspective of a casual player. Well, the thing, I mean, that comes to, like, you know, looking across the fence from both directions. There's a lot of raiders who feel that, casu that the reason why a lot of things are in the game is because casual players have that sense of entitlement. The fact of the matter is, some people have a sense of entitlement, some people don't. And, and it doesn't really matter in which camp. Uh, but it sort of goes both ways. Because the reason why some raiders will say LFR should go is because... Uh, they will argue, well, people, should, if they want to see it, that normal is easy enough to do. Even with limited time, you could do it in a pull. And from the point of view of people who can sort of look at it from, you know, that is easier content than the stuff we do, we can see that, yes, that's quite straightforward to do. It's a little bit, I suppose, like that series Preach did recently, didn't he? On, you know, getting a gear, a character up um, and the way to do it. The thing is, what I haven't seen it, but, you know, what he did will have been, I suppose, the most efficient way to do it, but also not the way that an actually genuinely new player or casual player would have done it, because they don't see the game from the same as he does, having, you know, done the much harder stuff, so it seems a lot simpler. It's a bit like looking down and going, oh, yeah, I can easily go down that slope, as opposed to being at the bottom of it going, actually, that slope looks a bit steep. You know, to get into the same point, it's easier to go down the slope than up it. Just my view, anyway. Uh, next one. So, too bad the heritage armor for Dark Iron is grandly disappointed. I'm actually quite pleased because the heritage armor... See, someone was saying recently as well... I couldn't find this comment there. I wanted to do it for this. I wanted to show that comment. Something about... Uh, what was this thing about allied races? Um, oh, yeah. Allied race has been put in the game just so the political can make more money from race changes. And I actually don't think it is. Uh, and I think the heritage armor is a bit of a clue to that. Um, I think it's just a time sink for us. You know, because what is the Heritage Armor system? It's the system whereby if you want the Heritage Armor, you have to level it from level 20 to whatever, 110 at the moment, without any level boost or anything like that. Now, they'd get more money 
from us paying for a level boost than us playing from level 20 to 110, wouldn't they? So if it was just from, you know, the clumsy grab of money, then they would allow us to, to just do that, to get the heritage armor. So they're not doing so. I think it's a it's a time sink. I think they want us to spend more time leveling up. That's why they made the changes, the the zone scaling changes. I think they've done that and combined it with this. And it's also the reason you'll notice why they've and they've reiterated it again. I think they said it in the Q and A as well. That they're not going to allow, or certainly there's no current plans. But I think the implication is they're not going to allow the allied races ever to be the hero classes. Because the hero class, of course, don't start at level 20. Um, and the reason, and the actual, I think, I'm pretty sure Ian actually said, because there's a certain, in terms of the way it's working, starting at the level 20 thing. So... Now, I would argue, in actual facts, that given that they've made such a chronological mess of the levelling zones anyway... There would be nothing to stop you if you wanted an allied race death knight, say. Doing the starter quest, but that being scaled down as well, and, and you actually being like level one effectively. And 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 you start or start at level twenty, I should say. Uh I think they could scale that content and then it just suddenly dumps you in Stormwind or Orgrimmar to do the rest of the quests, leveling up as a void elf death knight or something. But, you know, they don't want to. They see that as too messy. Maybe it is. Um, but, yeah, I actually see the Heritage. When they produce a race that I want to play, and I do want a Dark Iron character, I just haven't decided what yet. The fact that the Heritage armor is bad, sorry, designers, but it is, um, I see as a good thing. Because then I don't have to level it all the way up. I can just pay for a boost. Or race change one of my existing characters. Uh, next one, new range class. What should the new range D plus class? Should be a warden, and you throw the glaive thing. Um, I think the thing with the warden is that although, yeah, you can see, you know, some ranged abilities there, they do also fight melee. And also, I think if you're just going to throw things, that at some point someone's going to ask, well, you could actually just walk up to him and smack it in the face. Um, so it would become a pseudo range class, really. The tinkerer with the turrets and stuff like that. I don't really see WoW as being that sort of game. I'm not sure. And there was a similar class, wasn't there, in Warhammer Online, a dwarf one, forgotten what it was called now, that had the turrets, the gun turrets and stuff. Um, and you know, that was it, a dwarf engineer. But I don't see that as really working in World of Warcraft. <clears throat> I do think, you know, I mean, I, I am one who sort of thinks there shouldn't be new classes at all. Um, if anything, they should just add ranged options to existing classes that only have melee options. That would be better. <laughs> that would be better. But um, if there were going to be a new range class, I do feel, especially with the new changes with the force personal loot, that they ought to seriously think about another class that uses a bow or gun. Uh, I feel sorry for hunters going to the next expansion. Unless you happen... like Some guilds do have multiple hunters, in which case you know, you're probably going to be okay. Um, but if you're like the lone hunter in your guild, you're going to have a torrid time getting weapons because no one else is going to be able to trade you one. You're going to have to get your own weapon. And you might get lucky. Maybe you'll get lucky. Um, but maybe you won't. But on balance, people are not going to get lucky with something like that, really, are they? Um, and that's it for the questions for this week. So, uh, sort of starting off by... And, and going into sort of more usual stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've made it this long, uh, then at least you've found it interesting, I hope. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.